Hello out there! It's time for the Hockey Minute, your source for all of today's hockey news with some opinion. Strap in for the fastest news in the NHL. This episode is proudly brought to you by fucking nobody. We don't have any sponsors. Now, here's your hosts, Brandon and Ryan. And here we are. I am your host, Brandon, and with me as always, my co-host, Ryan. Ryan, how you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. The boredom's uh, it's kind of setting in. I, I haven't resorted to making a TikTok yet and dancing shirtless <laughs> in my living room, but we are trying to promote the podcast, so... Matt, if that's what you need me to do, I'm happy to do it. Um, that's it. Aside from that, though, things are good, man. How are, how are you? How's the family? I know your wife was a little bit under the weather there. Oh, yeah, everybody's good. I think she's just tapping out for a day off, and hopefully she doesn't listen to this. <laughs> but uh, no, no, everybody's good, man. It was uh, beautiful weather. Nice to play outside with the family today. It's uh, taking advantage of this the, at the, the best we can anyway. Practicing social distancing. No, not at all. Not at all. We're uh, basically open mouth kissing everybody I can find in the uh, in the grocery store. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, today we've got a fun episode coming for you. It's something a little bit different. Uh, we're actually going to do the hockey minutes very own trophies. And uh, to start it off, I thought I'd fire some rapid fire questions at Ryan and uh, throw uh, yeah throw a, a bunch of questions at him and see what he comes up with. Uh, off the top of his head for a bunch of different answers here. So, uh, Ryan, whenever you're ready, we'll get started. Oh, man, I've never been good at these pop quizzes, but uh, whatever you got, bring it on. Uh, you're lucky there's no right answers, except for every one <laughs> you say is going to be wrong. So. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, three, two, one, go. Favorite rookie this season? Makar. Player with the most grit? Tom Wilson. Uh, most charisma? Oh, Jack Eichel. Best flow? <sighs> Roman Yossi. Ugh. Silkiest hands? Uh, Barkov. Uh, that's good. Best defensive defenseman? Oh, man. It's, uh, Jacob Slavin. <laughs> Worst chirper? Uh... Probably like Justin Abdelkader. Uh, worst fighter. Oh, um, Austin Watson. <laughs> all right. Well, that's uh, that's all I had for you there. I don't even think that was a full minute, but that was uh, it was as rapid fire as we can get. I don't think I've seen the Austin Watson fight. What are you talking about? Oh, the worst fight. Oh, he just he hugs guys. Like, the, oh, like okay. Austin Watson was a, like, I don't know if people know this, he was a first round pick back in 2010. It took him a couple of years to break in. And then it was like, right. he had limited skill, was kind of like a power forward and junior. And so he's like, oh, I'm going to fight. You know, that's how I'm going to stick, you know, I'm going to stick around by fighting. And the guy just hugs and then he gets beaten up anytime his opponent gets a hand free. So big, <laughs> big guy, but just a terrible fighter. It's kind of like the, the Brandon Prust school of fighting. I don't know if you paid attention yeah. to his tenure in Vancouver, but it was just embarrassing. Yeah. He just hug guys until it ended, but that was really the only tool set he brought. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get into some kind of longer form discussion on uh, just a, a few of our uh, different awards here, just so we're going to have a little bit of fun. So uh, I think to start off, we're going to go with the, uh, the raw, no, no, sorry, pardon me, the, uh, the best backup goalie. Yeah, I think... Uh... Probably Halak in Boston, right? I mean, we, we talked a little bit through our, our actual awards about Tuka Rask. You pointed out he doesn't play as many games as other starters. And um, part of the reason, I mean, Boston still had 100 points. And Yaroslav Halak is, like, sneaky good. Like, his career shutout numbers are, are actually pretty high. Um, but, yeah, he's he's right. probably a one goalie on some other teams. And so he gets my nod. Um who do you think? I mean, it's got it. There's a it, we're in that era now where there's like a one A one B, right? So yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if it counts to the, to the same level, but probably Robin Lehner. It would be would be my pick. He's just uh, he's probably taken over as the starter, which is why I say it may not count. But at least for the last year, he was the backup. Uh, at least when he when he moved to Vegas, and uh, I think he's he's got you know the the abilities to to be an actual starter. But like you're saying, that really is the way that the league is going. Like. 
I think Vancouver's got a really good combo with Demko in the back. Um, I don't think he's nearly as good as, as uh, any of the other guys mentioned yet, but I think they're headed there. Um, probably uh, Georgiev and Shesterkin in uh, in New York. Um, oh, you don't even include Lundqvist in that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's he's getting scratched, right? Sorry. <laughs> He's in the minors now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He doesn't mind. He's making his money. But uh, yeah, sorry. I was I was actually kind of listing either one of them as the backup, but both of them probably are better than oh, better okay. than Lundqvist, uh, if not now, then very soon. Um, yeah. Maybe Carter Hart is does, does he count as the backup still, or behind Brian Elliott, or is Brian Elliott the backup in Philly? Oh no, yeah, Brian Elliott's, yeah. Elliott's definitely the backup. Yeah. I, like I was going to challenge you on your Leonard just because he was kind of the number one in Chicago. Then he gets traded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I was thinking kind of currently. So yeah. if yeah, so if you had to be if you if we're talking at the beginning of the year and we're looking at the goalies, who do you go with? Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, if I if I didn't have the knowledge I had from this season, I wouldn't know how good those Rangers goalies were, right? So you'd have to go with Halak in Boston. Um, but when, yeah. when you watch Shesterkin play, I mean, we've got a couple of Rangers fans that uh, work on the podcast, and they just they rave about him, right? Yeah, yeah, those uh, wave of Russian goalies in the Metro. It's weird how it kind of seems to to move through the the countries. I mean, positionally, right? Like how many years were Swiss goalies kind of the the hot item, and then Swedish goalies? Now it seems to be Russian goalies. Yeah, Finland yeah. too. They had <laughs> Finland had everybody. All right, so how about uh, the most improved player? Anybody come to mind? Uh, I mean, Anthony Duclair, I don't know if we like call him improved. He's been around the league so long. He's bounced around. I think he's just found a good home and a good situation in Ottawa. Um, he's, you know, he kind of just took off this year, right? But he was good as when he was with Arizona. He had a good rookie season, and uh, there was a lot of expectation around him. Um he, you know, again, I don't know if you can call him most improved when he's he's just kind of been around. And we've seen guys in the past. I mean, guys like Jonathan Chichu who had just a monster year out of nowhere and then disappeared again. And but uh, I would say Duclair. He gets my pick. I mean, there weren't too many guys when I was looking at the the point totals. There weren't too many names out of place. But um, I don't know. I mean, who who jumps out to you? Like even from a, a goaltender or defenseman. It's it's such an interesting question because really, I mean, I think Anthony Duclair is the answer that pops to mind. And I know um, I should be looking for, <laughs> for another answer. But the the truth is he's just, I, I've I've watched him for almost his whole career. I mean, not not closely, but I've known who he is and followed him. And, and I've never would have expected him to have anywhere close to the year that he's had this last year. I mean, I kind of had him pegged as a career tweener, maybe an 8 to 10 goal, 12 goal cap. But, you know, he's... He's playing like a legitimate first liner, and I just I never would have seen that coming. Yeah, I mean, until the NHL gets an award for that sort of thing, I don't think we'll we'll really be able to pay attention to it. Um, like I know the NBA, they've got most improved players uh, awards as well, so there's a bit more of an emphasis on looking at the year before. Another guy, I guess, off the top of my head, J.T. Miller, only because I saw a lot of them this year, and yeah. I don't know how good he was before, but I think in Tampa last year he had something like 35 points, and then this year was uh, one of the leading scorers on the Canucks. Basically point a game, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I mean, I, I guess I was kind of considering somebody that was coming out of nowhere and then uh, putting up a performance, but you're right. Yeah, JT Miller definitely stepped it up. Obviously, the roles were vastly different, right? Tampa being a contender, keeping him on the third and fourth line at... Uh, yeah. It results in different point production for sure. No power play time, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you're right. That's a, that's also a really good one. Yeah. So how about uh, what about the toughest player in the NHL? I mean, I realize that fighting has kind of gone the way of the dodo bird. There really aren't any true enforcers anymore. But does anybody stand out for you as the toughest player in the NHL? Well, I'm actually going to let you go first on this because I, I have my answer in mind. But I'm probably going to come across as a homer. So I'm going to let you go first on this one. <laughs> okay. I wonder. I'm going to think if I can guess who that answer is in a sec. <laughs> but uh, I mean, for me, the the toughness doesn't really come in the same way that it it used to, right? I mean, 15 to 20 years ago, tough was Bob Probert or you know Donald Brashear or yeah. Marty McSorley, something like that. Yeah. And and now tough, I mean, to me is is somebody like uh, uh, Nick Foligno. It's I mean, maybe people don't watch him that closely, but I, I just the guy is an absolute animal. I don't think he's that big physically. 
but I, I've watched him dummy some guys, uh, and he's just <laughs> he's ruthless in the corners. He's a he's a an absolute monster. It seems like nobody really wants to go against him. I know Marcus is bigger, uh, his his brother yeah. um, playing for Minnesota, but I, I don't. I mean, I know he's got an edge to him and he fights, but I, I'd give the the edge to Nick uh, just about every day of the week. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's probably my pick. Yeah, that's a good pick, actually. Yeah, he's he fights like uh, he's kind of a, I guess what a light heavyweight, maybe middleweight even. But yeah, he's middleweight, yeah, he's, he's tough, man. He just and he's scra- he's, he looks like he's comfortable when he fights, and that's the scariest thing is that's it. He's like, oh, I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my pick is uh, is Tom Wilson, and I know there's other guys like there's big guys um, that are still kind of the last of the enforcers: Derek England, uh, Ryan Reeves. Um, even, you know, I, I do throw in a guy like, uh, like a Lucic in that mix. I mean, doesn't do it often, but Tom Wilson to me is tough because he, you know, he hits, he fights, he does all that stuff. He can actually play, but he's, you know, he's a big guy, six, four, probably around two thirty, two forty. but he still has this track record of when you watch him fight, he almost looks like he's out of control. And we just talked about Felino being in control and kind of comfortable but Wilson just, he gets mad when he fights. And when you're that size and you're mad and the adrenaline kicks in, I don't think I've ever seen him get his bell rung. And in the last couple of years, you know, uh, he, he knocked out Oleksiak in Pittsburgh, who was six seven, and he just kind of gave him two quick shots and, and down he went. And in the playoff, or in the cup run, too, he, he came out of the box and he beat the wheels off of Braden Coburn. And Braden Coburn's a big guy, too, and Coburn looked like he wanted no part of it, so... To, I mean, it's a homer pick, but it's definitely, in my opinion, Tom Wilson's probably the toughest guy in the league. What about uh, Ryan Reeves and his history with Wilson? Well, he, yeah, I mean, Reeves likes to think he's... He, every interview I hear with that guy, oh, yeah, Tom and I play the same way. No, you don't, Ryan. No, you don't, okay? Tom Wilson's a 20-goal <laughs> scorer in the NHL. Like, what are you talking about? Ryan Reeves was riding the bench in Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Finals, like, there, Reeves is definitely the last of the fighters, like the last of the enforcers kind of post lockout when he came up and, and, uh, he's still good at his job in that way. But I mean, you, you, yeah. kind of, you hit the nail on the head though, is now there's that transition of can the tough guys, can they skate? Can, you know, can he keep up with the game? Can he at least chip in offensively? Yep. And Reeves, uh, has found a nice home in Vegas. I'm, I'm not skate. saying, he yeah, he can skate. Oh, like I'll, I'll give him, I'll give him that. He can move. Yeah. But, uh, he just doesn't really have the hands or the, the IQ, but yeah. Right, but I mean, you, you mentioned Marcus Foligno too. I mean, that's a guy that'll get you 10 or 15 goals. Uh, Matt Martins, actually, I'll give a shout-out to him, too. He's kind of the last of yep. the, the, the uh, just kind of the, the no-skill, just I'll fight you, I'll hit you, but that's about it. <laughs> All right, that's, that's, that's fair. Let's, let's move on to uh, some of the more, let's call them fun or slightly offensive ones, but uh, I think these are going to be a little bit of fun. So the fattest player in the NHL. I don't know if we're allowed to use that word publicly anymore, but we're calling them the fattest player in the NHL. And obviously this is in terms of, of NHL fat, right? All of these guys put me to shame. It doesn't matter how fat yeah. they are. In, in, in NHL terms, my, my disgusting dad body will outfat them any day. So let's just get that, uh, let's get that out there. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're 11% body fat. Ew. Like, <laughs> exactly. What do you mean double digits? That's <laughs> disgusting. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just mentioned him, actually. My pick would be Reeves. A um, couple things. He's a big guy, but he's actually got a beer. I don't know if it's a beer line or if he started a beer company. But I just feel like this guy's living in Vegas right now with his <laughs> with his beer. <laughs> and these guys yeah. are probably thinking, I mean, the playoffs would have started today. So, I mean, we're, we're not even close, right? Uh, today, we're recording this on April the 9th. And... Uh, yeah, playoffs would have started today, and so I think Reeves is probably just like sitting there sampling his own his own brew, and uh, I feel like he'll come back the biggest. Bufflin, I don't know, do we count him as an active NHLer? Ah, see, that was kind of my pick. I was like, oh fuck, I don't know because he's probably still technically active. I don't really know what the deal is there, but uh, I don't, I don't want to win and cheat on a technicality anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, think, I think Bufflin gets exactly he he gets the honorary nod for sure. Um, I think I think my pick is is probably a, a little bit uh, maybe controversial. I don't know if you'll agree, but uh, I, I think a, maybe Alex Ovechkin. Um, I can he's, see that. He's, 
he's kind of a truck. He's a he's definitely a power forward, and he carries himself like it. And he doesn't really seem like the kind who thinks that he needs to keep himself in like uh, low body fat shape. Let's say he's like, no. I'm scoring goals. I'm in position. I'm going to keep doing this. So uh, f off. Yeah, I mean, he's, right. he, he's got a little one at home, and he's got another one on the way. Like he, he's he's not doing cardio he's not riding the bike he's not on the peloton no. <laughs> he's, exactly. he's probably sleeping in and those russians they love their their vodka he's probably getting into that so that's fair and i mean i, th- I think we all saw the uh the videos of him dancing in the fountain and uh, that was not a greek god there <laughs> yeah you know, i was like this guy scores like at the time 600 career goal i'm like this guy with right. that physique are you kidding me i could score so i could have made the goals. show yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> uh all right, so um, do you have any other uh, any other fat players, or can we move on here? <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. Shout out to Phil Kessel. All right, so uh, we're going to move on to the Al Iafredi Worst Hair Award. Now, uh, I should say that I, I resemble this award quite closely. I, <laughs> I will not shave my dome, and it is getting worse uh, by the minute. Uh, this uh, the pandemic being closed, uh, being <laughs> closing all the hairdressers is uh, making uh, my wife look at me less and less. But oh, that's probably good for less. She should less break kids, out so. the shears. <laughs> See, like at least you have somebody that can do that. I I got to do it in the mirror by myself. And uh, oh, that's fair. That's why I don't go outside anymore. Nobody likes the bowl cut. No, no, hundred <laughs> percent. All right. So, do you have anybody that comes to mind for the Ally Frady Award? I'm gonna go, and he he'll he, you know he can kick my ass, but Milan Lucic, uh, right? Well, the first game, like first game in Calgary where he got his helmet knocked off, he was looking like he was trying to be the sixth member of the Backstreet Boys with that bleach blonde look, and I wow. I could only think the only thing that I thought when hockey players or any athletes when they're in a slump, you start switching things up, you try to do things a little differently, and. Um, maybe some people don't, don't remember this, but he was a monster back in 2006, 2007 for the Vancouver Giants. Oh. And when you're in junior yeah. and you're in the playoffs, none of those kids can grow facial hair. So you dye your hair blonde. And I was thinking the only thing that made logical sense to me was that he probably in the summertime, you know, he gets traded. There's a lot of kind of negativity, um, regarding the trade. I mean, James Neal for Lucic is, uh, is a pretty one-sided deal. And I thought maybe he's just trying to shake things up, just get a new groove and trying to, you know, maybe recapture his glory days mentally. Uh, if that wasn't his line of thinking, then I have no idea what the hell he's doing, because that was uh, that was not a great look for him. It's 2020 and uh, <laughs> no, nobody's nobody's frosting their tips anymore. So you don't uh, think the Marshall Mathers look was an aesthetic <laughs> choice? No, no, no. It was oh, interesting. It was a tough That's look. Weird. Tough look for Milan. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> Oh man, that that actually was one of the more puzzling moments of the season for me when I saw the helmet <laughs> fly off that first time. It's like, what? When did I Lance Bass understand? end up on the Calgary Flames? <laughs> he looks thick. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, for me, it's it's probably Zach Cassian, and I, I love the guy. I, I love his attitude, minus the the skates to the chest. But uh, I just. Whatever he's doing with that dome, it just screams, I don't give a fuck. Like, he's, he's, he's letting it all fly out. <laughs> and I, I love that. That was the ultimate spirit of, of, Al, of Al Iafredi's hair. I mean, I, anybody who hasn't seen it, please, please Google image Al Iafredi. Um, it's special. It really is. Yeah. Like, he's rocking a full skullet for, I don't know, the last five years of his career. It's incredible. Um, for, for me, I'd probably be a, a runner-up as, uh, as Bo Horvat. Um, most people probably don't look that close, but he's, he's on the path to get Slav, uh, shortly. Oh, it's, is he? it's not going to be long. Oh, absolutely. She's thin. And I don't know if he's going to be getting plugs or whatever, if he's going to be as self-conscious as LeBron was about the whole thing, but, uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's definitely thin. I'm going to look him up right now. When you're making that kind of money though, that Bo Horvat's making, like, I, I feel like you got to just do it. Like just spend the money. Yeah, isn't it painful when you have to keep doing it? I, I don't know that much. I mean, like I said, I'm in that situation, but don't have that money, so I don't want to tempt myself. But it seems like a, a painful process. It's got to be tough for uh, for Bo, too. I'm actually looking at a picture of him right now. Uh, I can see it. I can see the potential there to, to go the Getzlaff route. But yeah. uh, he's in a room with Prince Charming, Brock Besser, a um, couple of handsome All Swedes, right. right? Like JT Miller's got good a good head of hair, too. So, yeah, Bo, it's, <laughs> uh, geez 
I'm sure he I'm sure he sleeps just fine with, you know, his beautiful family and 30 million in the bank, but yeah. Yeah, he's he's not hurt. He'll be all right. Yeah. All right, so I think that's going to do it for us for our uh, inaugural hockey minute uh, trophies unless you have anything that you wanted to add here, Ryan. Uh it's my brother's birthday today. I'll say happy birthday to Joel, but outside of that guys, just thanks for the listens and uh, you know, just keep safe and we we're all going to get through this. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys, from Brandon and Ryan, we'll catch you next time on the Hockey Minute. We'd like to take a second and thank you, the listener, for joining us. And a big thanks goes to our writers and production team, Jules, Mark, and Matt. We couldn't do this without you. That's going to do it for us. This is Brandon and Ryan. We'll talk to you next time on the Hockey Minute.